Oh, what's going on today? Having one of those weeks. <clears throat> 15 Tahoe with a 5.3. I think it's the L68 engine in this. Um, it's only got... I don't even know. Hold on a second. 91,000 on it, okay? Truck's under warranty. Came in with a barrel circuit high, I believe, or low, one of the two, and an intake air temp sensor circuit uh, code in it, and a P0101, I believe, for the mass airflow performance. Also had a 174 and a 172 for fuel trim um, rich on both banks, right? So I wish I would have caught this originally, but I didn't for you guys. But anyways, when it first came in, I'm looking at the data, right? And I'm running it. I get it up to temp. And I noticed the mass airflow was reading low. And of course, we had mass airflow codes, right? So I'm thinking, okay, I got a mass airflow issue, right? And I did have a mass airflow issue. I checked the frequency on the mass airflow. It's glitching out like they always do. And um, okay, great. Throw a mass airflow in it, clear the codes, right? Now, mind you, before I cleared the codes, <clears throat> I was checking fuel trims for this rich condition, right? And I went out and drove the vehicle, whatever. Field trims were perfect, okay? Field trims look fine. Look at them now, okay? Negative 17 on bank two on the long term. Negative three, um, or I'm sorry, negative 17 on bank two, negative 20 on bank one, right? Okay, and I haven't started the vehicle yet. Now, what I'm gonna show you, uh, or what I was gonna tell you is, is okay, so I check, I check the uh, field trims, right? And I put a mass airflow in it, and I clear the codes. Then I go to check my repairs, right? And I check the fuel trims to see how everything's doing. Now, I already looked at fuel comp. I, I pulled a fuel sample, all that. Fuel, that's all good, okay? Fuel composition, fine. And I'm thinking, you know, maybe I, uh, well, anyways, long story short, I started up. All of a sudden, my trims start going way negative. I'm like, oh, that's nice. Uh, what's going on here? Is it learning? It, you know, what's going on? No. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if it's a strategy of the computer or what, but... As soon as I took care of the mass airflow and cleared the codes, my uh, rich condition came uh, came to light, okay? So let me limit up this data. I'm going to show you because there's no codes in it right now. Um, it took forever for me to uh, get the part I needed. There is a TSB out on this. I didn't know that at the time, but I'm going to show you something. So hold on one second. All right, I just started it up. We're in closed loop. And you can see our long term is at negative three on bank two. Our long term on bank one is negative three. And our two short terms are sitting, you know, still negative, right? Slowly climbing negative. <clears throat> O2 sensors are switching like they should, okay? Now I want you to do is watch the mass airflow. Again, we have a 5.3 in it. Looks fine right now, but it's a little high because look at the coolant temp. Oh, where is it? Coolant temp. I know I thought I put it on here. Did I miss it? There it is, ECT, 120. Okay, so we're not at the temp yet. So we're going to let this thing get up to temp. And what I want to show you is I want to show you these fuel trims start going way negative. And then I want to show you what I did to, uh, well, essentially confirm what I believe is a high, well, a high pressure fuel pump leak. Okay. These have high pressure fuel pumps because it is a GDI system. They hide them under the intake. Um, <clears throat> and let me let it get up to temp um, to get it to duplicate and then uh, I'll show you what I did. All right. It's starting to come up to temp 130. And you can see that mass airflow reading, right? Slowly going down, going low. On the grams per second throttle positions at eight percent notice that our um, manifold um, inches of mercury is at about 8.2 at idle fuel alcohol contents at 10 percent that's fine intake air temp sensor about 78 that that's pretty good we're sitting steady on our um, bank bank one downstream we're sitting steady on our uh, you know the Basically, there's nothing wrong with the O2s. They're doing what they're supposed to be doing. But look at this short terms. Still negative, right? Look at this long term. Negative 15 on bank two. Look at this long term. 
negative 16 on bank one. All right. Look at that mass airflow. Going down, right? So we got a breathing problem. Now, I don't know how many of you are familiar with this engine, but I'm gonna bring you out. I'm gonna show you what I did. And then we're gonna look at these trims. Once I disconnect the two uh, breathers that go to the intake uh, box, all right? So let's get out there and look at that. All right guys, so what I want you to watch is as I disconnect these breathers for this PCV system, I want you to watch the fuel trims, okay? Again, negative 16, negative 15, equal on both banks. So let me disconnect this one. All right, that one's disconnected. Well, let's disconnect this one. All right, now they're both disconnected. Watch the short terms. Look at the long terms. Hmm, interesting. Interesting. Looks pretty good, right? Look at our mass airflow. Look how low that's reading. I got a slight vacuum on there. I got a slight vacuum on there. So both are disconnected and look at our trims. All right, let me hook them back up. Look at the short terms. Look at them go negative. Hmm. Interesting. So, I was kind of baffled at this point. So, oh, sorry. So, at this point, I was pretty baffled. I'm thinking I got a PCV issue, right? And I got a PCV valve for this thing, too. But, this uh, 174 and this 172 uh, fuel trim uh, rich codes on both banks equal, right? Um, and then, of course, you know, the lower, then a little bit lower on our map and a um, obviously low on our MAF, right? Now, once I hooked up the PCV, obviously our uh, mass airflow comes up, right? So I'm like thinking, okay, do I got a bad PCV valve? Um, I pulled the oil dipstick check the oil level oil level's fine oil has a slight hint uh, well it smells like fuel right so i'm thinking okay yep it's legitimately um running rich right dumping fuel down in the crankcase and you know it's sucking those fuel vapors up through the pcv system and hence why when i disconnect that that uh <clears throat> that would be what our um well anyways when i disconnect the two um hoses because those go down to the each valve cover, right, on this. And then it's got that PCV valve that lives... The PCV valve actually lives down under the... um, uh, What do you call it? The electronic throttle body, right? So I'm doing a PCV valve regardless, okay? But at this point, I was confused. I'm like, okay, what the hell? Maybe there's a TSB out for this, right? Because it's a newer truck. Sure enough, there's a TSB out for these two codes, and what was odd and what was funny and ironic, so to speak, is it told me in that TSB to do exactly what I just did. And if I and if my trims come back to normal, come back to normal, it needs a high pressure fuel pump. It's leaking down and it may or may not have a smell of fuel in the oil, it said. And um, yeah, 